The French Lick and West Baden Resort offers visitors a chance to step back in time. And recently, a crew has uncovered a hidden gem that's now giving the community another glimpse into the past. Vincent's Public Broadcasting, Selena Barker, has this story on how the resort is working to bring this piece of history back to life. Justin Harris is the director of facilities at the French Lick Resort in Orange County. As part of his job, Harris oversees the maintenance of all of the buildings, including the French Lick Resort and Casino, as well as the West Baden Springs Hotel. You know, we, we've got multiple projects going on in this area. So we had the drainage project. Uh, we're also working on the restoration of the bowling and billiard pavilion in the Sunken Gardens area. And we needed some soil for that. To help with this project, crew started digging up soil when they found something unusual underneath, the remnants of an old pathway. Curious, Harris went up the chain of command for permission to keep digging. Chuck Franz is the vice president of French Lick Resort's parent company, Cook Group. After hitting that, Justin came to me and said, we've hit this, what do you think it is? Took him to my office, showed him historic aerials, and turned him loose and said, if you'd like to uncover it, go for it. Not knowing ever, that they'd hit what they hit. What they hit was the old Neptune Spring, which was built in 1892. A spring is a place where water moving underground finds an opening to the surface, sometimes in a continuous flow. In early times, they were sometimes the only source of fresh water a community had. In the, in the early days, this was a location where buffalo, deer, um, a lot of wildlife would gather and they would lick the minerals from the, the ground, specifically out of the water. And um, it, became a, it became known as a place for good hunting grounds and so the Native Americans would, would be in this area. Um, eventually there was a, a, a fort, a munitions dump here. Um, so people have been coming to this area because of the mineral water. The spring was one of four mineral springs on the West Baden Hotel property. People from around the country flock to the area for its medicinal properties. Old photographs show a 30-foot tall wooden structure surrounded the spring, which was topped off by a dome, giving travelers to the area a nice spot to stop and visit. It's just been a, a hot spot for people and animals for a, a long time. And that's what attracted people into this area originally um, when Indiana became a state. This portion of Orange County was the only portion of Orange County that wasn't sold at, at public auction, surveyed off and sold. And that's because the federal government wanted to, to mine the minerals from this area. The Neptune Spring was no longer in use by the 1910s. Most of the other springs on the property were capped, but to Harris's surprise, this spring is still active. When we pulled the concrete out of the spring, um, that was the path of least resistance. So it, it actually restored the flows back to the spring in the original location, which is really cool. It's the only active original spring to the West Baden property. While Harris and his team hope they're able to restore the spring to its former glory, they have another issue to deal with. That's figuring out how the initial spring was able to drain. I don't know how they did it, but um, the original Sprudel House was an area that, that our guests could come to and sample the waters from all of the springs. So that water had to get pumped into that area, you know, to, into this brutal house for the sampling. Um, and I don't know if they also pumped, um, we, we found a, a four inch clay tile that exited that basin. Um, I, I don't know how it worked yet. Um, the, it, it doesn't currently work, but when we, um, took some elevations, it, it doesn't want to flow by gravity into the creek. He's also trying to figure out how to go about restoring the spring while keeping the history intact. Harris, who is also a licensed engineer, is currently working on the problem. The people back in the 1800s were um, craftsmen and they did a lot of work um, that is very difficult for us to, to replicate without um, getting too much technology involved and then you know you kind of lose the historic nature of, of what it was and um, the cost of doing that would be significant. Harris says right now crews are working on this project while juggling several others which is why there is no set timeline for when this project could be complete. He does say complete restoration of the spring would probably cost tens of thousands of dollars. While Harris and others say they don't quite know what the future holds for the spring. Being a part of uncovering history 
has been a great feeling. It's really a wonderful thing to be involved in this and to see part of history come, come back to life. Um, I absolutely love the history of this area. I'm a native of French Lick. I've grown up on these grounds and all of the various states that it's been in until the restoration. And, you know, knowing of things, but not knowing what remains um, is, you know, that, that was my childhood. Now I get to be a part of actually discovering, rediscovering what was here 100 years ago. You're a part of history. There's not a lot of things that go back that far. So it's just really cool to be able to come down and work on a project that is the resort, number one, and try to revitalize it, bring back the history for all of our guests that are coming here. It's just, it's, it's just really cool. For folks at the West Baden Springs Hotel, this discovery has breathed new interest in the area's past, with hopes to further unveil what lies beneath. Reporting from Benson's for Indiana News Desk, I'm Shalina Parker. The West Baden Springs Hotel is one of the big success stories of Indiana Landmarks, a nonprofit dedicated to saving historical buildings in the state. Now, every year since 1991, the group has released a top 10 list of its most endangered structures. This year's list includes a crumbling 19th century asylum, a striking Art Deco skyscraper, and a church built by a pioneer African-American architect. Now, to make the final cut, the structures must have a chance at revitalization, even if that chance is is slim. We're joined now by Mark Dolasi, the Vice President of Preservation Services for Indiana Landmarks. He oversees the 10 Most Endangered program. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. So how do you go about selecting buildings for that, that top 10 list? Well, we have a uh, number of offices around the state, and those staff that are in those offices are very well connected to their communities that they work in and the historic properties uh, throughout them. And so they know which ones are uh, nicely restored, but also which ones are threatened or endangered that we need to be paying attention to. So why? do this? Why is it important to preserve these buildings and what does the designation then mean for those buildings? Yeah, we well, for us at Indiana Landmarks, what it does is it gives a kind of priority list that we need to focus on to develop strategies for these specific properties, where to invest some of our financial and human resources. Um, and we also hope that in the communities that these uh, buildings are located in, that it provides an opportunity for them to kind of come together and find solutions uh, for these properties. You know, one of the buildings this year is the Steinsville Commercial Building that's just north of Bloomington. It's been on sale for one dollar. Do you have an update on that property? Um, not Particularly, we are re-engaging with the, the town leadership there right now and talking about what the future for those buildings might be. They are getting into pretty rough condition. And so finding a, a solution for how to move forward with these buildings, who some of the uh, potential users might be, that's all gonna be part of what we're gonna be working on going forward. Now, how satisfying is it to see something like the West Baden Springs Hotel come back to life. I know, I mean, I've been there a few times. Every time I walk in, I get goosebumps. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to say how long ago it was that I started working on that project longer ago than I, I want to say, but um, it is really rewarding to see something that is in a state of collapse like that building was and to come back and not just be a, a you know a beautiful place that people get to enjoy that's wonderful but also the economic benefits that a place like West Baden brought to the Springs Valley uh, probably something like 800 jobs that had been lost when it closed so that is a real uh, boon for any community that is able to put a building back into use so any favorite buildings on the list that you'd like to see preserved? You know, I have a soft spot for a building up in Gary, which is the Jeter Means house. Uh, it's a small sort of ranch style house, but the Means brothers were pioneering African-American developers of uh, housing for uh, the black community there. And 
Um, it, the neighborhood has already come together, cleaned up the property considerably. So we're hoping that we can find uh, new life uh, for that uh, residence. All right, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you for having us.